Hey, what's up? Hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome back to another video. Now today I want to talk about the Flying V. The Flying V has got to be one of the most controversial guitar body shapes. Now I want to address some of the pros and some of the cons of actually choosing this guitar in particular. Now way back in 1958 when Gibson introduced the Flying V, it was totally a radical futuristic body shape for that period of time. People were very, very torn by this guitar. However, now it's been more accepted as an actual guitar style to actually pick. And there's a lot of advantages to actually choosing a Flying V over a more traditional guitar shape like a PRS or a Les Paul or a Strat. And I want to talk about those first. Now let's kick things off with the benefits as to why you should use a Flying V. And the first thing that you should address is the playability of the guitar, because that's the most important thing about the instrument. How good can you play it? Now I love the fact the Flying V provides unbelievable accessibility on the upper frets on the guitar. And more traditional guitar shapes, Les Paul, Strats, it becomes very strenuous to play on these lower fret regions. You know, your technique goes out the window because you can't get your thumb in the right place and it makes it difficult to play fast and also it's really, really uncomfortable for your hands. Now, I love the fact the Flying V, because of the way that sort of neck seamlessly goes into the super slim body, you can go all the way down to the bottom fret, still maintain a healthy playing position and just maintain the speed. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now, the only other guitar I compare the accessibility to is a PRS Custom 24. When you go all the way down to 24 fret on those PRS Custom 24s, fantastic accessibility as well. Another point about the playability actually is determined by the weight of the guitar. And once again, the Flying V is probably one of the lightest guitars I have ever used. And I think this has a whole heap of benefits in many different departments. The first one is, you can play for longer without getting as much fatigue. If I play a two hour show with my Gibson Les Paul, my shoulder is in absolute agony. Whereas with the Flying V, if I play this for two hours stood up on stage, I don't really feel too much strain on my shoulder, which then means I can play at a higher level for longer and I can sustain more bit of oomph throughout the entirety of the show. The next benefit of the lightweightness of the body is actually how you can show off with the guitar. Now in a particular song, I actually like to pick up my guitar and play it one-handed, you know, because I can, you know, I just want to show off on stage. Who doesn't? Every young guitarist like myself, it's all about playing fast and showing off. So the way that the Flying V accommodates this for me is not only can I like just do some quick legato licks on the guitar, I can actually take this to the next tier and I can physically grab the guitar, throw it up in the air, and then I can start playing with it on one hand. Now this is super flashy and super fancy. Now yes, I can do this with my Gibson Les Paul, but one that guitar is super heavy, so my arm's like shaking away while I'm trying to play fast and I'm more focused on holding the guitar up than actually playing. And also number two, the shape of the guitar makes it more difficult to mount my hand and hold it in a solid position. Now the shape of the Flying V, because of the V shape, you can take your hand and mount it right here, lift it right up in the air, it's super lightweight, and then this gives you a solid foundation for actually focusing on your one-handed legato playing. It looks super flashy, and it's super lightweight, which means you can sustain that playing for longer. Now, some other techniques the Flying V also allows you to explore further is vibrato. Now, on a normal guitar, you know, you can play away and you can do vibrato and it sounds perfectly fine. But for some reason, the Flying V allows you to create this much more stronger and more emotive and expressive vibrato. And I'll explain this technique right now. So on a normal guitar, obviously you have it on a strap like this and you know, you do your vibrato and that's the end of it. But with the Flying V, once again, because of the shape, you can mount it in between your legs. So this means when you're stood up, you can mount the guitar in between your legs. One, this looks really cool. You know, you're like rocking on the guitar, but number two, you can do your vibrato and you have this solid foundation of where the guitar is seated on your body, which gives you this super expressive and sustained vibrato, which I've never experienced on a guitar before. It sounds unbelievable. Now let's talk about a few cons for a moment. And the first one is actually plugging the guitar in. Now you can see on the guitar body, we have the like input jack located all the way over here on the guitar, which is miles away on the actual perspective of the guitar. Now this isn't necessarily a problem when you're sat down like I am right now, but when you're stood up, this means the guitar lead 
actually gets in the way of you performing because what we normally do is with a guitar lead, we like to plug it in and run it in behind our guitar strap. So this avoids us from stepping on it and it pulling out and destroying our performance. So when you try to do this on the Flying V, you plug your lead in and then you run it in around your strap, but then it means when you're trying to put the guitar in between your legs or whatever, it gets in the way and you get tangled up on the actual lead, which can become pretty frustrating and pretty annoying. Now on particular models of a Flying V, especially some signature models like the Richie Faulkner Flying V, the lead guitarist from Judas Priest, he has had his input jack relocated to this region on the guitar. So this means he can plug his jack cable in and then route it behind his strap lead and the problem is solved. But the thing is a majority, about 80% of guitars on the market have this more traditional style of the original Flying V, which is really irritating. Now the next con is also for the logistical standpoint of transporting this guitar. Now we talked about how lightweight this guitar is, but the problem is when it comes to transporting this guitar, it's super heavy and that's due to the size of the case. Now the case for the Flying Vs are absolutely enormous. It's, they are huge. If you struggle to fit all your band stuff into the car, they're gonna hate you if you rack up with the Flying V case because you could literally fit two normal sized guitars into the size of this case. And also if you do a lot of transportation on public transport, so you go to all your practices and your gigs via the tube, bus, whatever, Flying V, don't bother even buying a Flying V because you're gonna have a hell of a time taking this around on the tube. So I would just suggest grabbing yourself a Strat or a Les Paul so you can chuck it in a gig bag and just walk around with it on your back. It's gonna be way easier. Now the next con I wanna address is what everyone's talking about on the internet. They say you cannot practice and play this guitar sat down and I wanna blow this out the water. I think it's absolute rubbish. So if we take a look at me sitting right now, I clearly have the Flying V seated in a super comfortable position. I have it sat in between my legs and I can play this perfectly fine, like there's no strain at all to my positioning. Now, first off, you can notice I'm nice, I'm sat up nice and straight. This is way better for my body overall. When you normally practice guitar, you're like hunched over like this and your back and your neck is killing after you've been practicing for an hour, just ridiculous. Whereas with the Flying V, it gives you more of a classical guitar positioning. You know, the guitar seated much, much more natural, it means you can sit up nicer so you're not putting as much strain on your back and your neck, and it means you can practice for longer and you're more comfortable. Then the next benefit is, as you can see, the sort of playing position of my hand is very natural to how it would translate if I were to stand up with the guitar. Because if you've practiced a lot sat down, you'll notice as soon as you stand up with a guitar strap, your whole positioning of your arm and your wrist and your hands is totally different to how it was when you were sat down. Now the Flying V sort of accommodates for this a lot better, because you can see, my arm sits a lot more natural and I can put my fingers in a more technique friendly positioning, which means I can practice more like how I would play stood up. So if we take a look at this PRS, which is a more traditional shaped guitar, you can see when I try and practice with this in a seated position, I'm much more hunched over the guitar in order to play the frets. Now this is really uncomfortable and it means I can't practice for as long. Whereas if we switch this out for the Flying V, you can see with the Flying V, what I was talking about earlier, it just sits in a more classical guitar position. Now, obviously you can't play the Flying V like this, sat down, it just slides off your knee, but you can instantly see how that relates to the more traditional guitar shape of being hunched over in order to practice. I just don't particularly like it. I actually, as soon as I adapted to practicing with the guitar sat down in this new position, I became a huge fan of it. Now, I actually wanna close this video out with the biggest, pro of picking a, up a Flying V. And that is the statement you make when you take it out of the case. Literally all your other guitarists, they're running their Les Pauls, their Strats, their Telecasters, guitars you have seen hundreds and thousands of times. Whereas when you rack up to the venue and there's multiple bands on the same bill on the same night and you take out the Flying V, you just leave this huge statement of, whoa, this guitarist is gonna be unbelievable. It's similar, as to, you see those footballers with the super flashy boots that are all like these luminous colors compared to their plain boots. You think that guy's gonna whack out all the tricks. And this is what this guitar does 
in a music situation. I love taking this guitar out the case and how it like intimidates other guitarists in the room because they think this guy's got huge confidence in order to have this guitar. He's gonna be crazy shredder. He's gonna put me in my box. I'm just gonna look terrible compared to this kid tonight. And I love that sort of thing and competition it sparks up between guitarists because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. You wanna be the fastest guitarist in the room. And the Flying V allows you to show that off or at least challenge for it. I just love the fact as well the audience don't know what to expect because they've probably never even seen a Flying V before in their life because these things are so rare. Not many people use them because you have to have, you know, you're waiting to be shot down if you can't play a Flying V very well because you have to be a certain caliber of guitarist. So the audience don't know what they're gonna get. They're gonna get heavy metal, are they're gonna get classic rock, are they gonna get some blues because there's so many different iconic players from so many different genres that use a Flying V but no one's ever been put in that situation as an audience member before, and it's probably the first time they've seen one. So it's super exciting for them, and they're probably gonna remember you way more than the other kid that's rocking a uh, Strat. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Would you use a Flying V? Do you like the Flying V? Do you think it's a terrible guitar? Let's talk about it in the comment section down below. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.